Jamaica Supervisor shot dead, teacher injured in Mapin Bar attack. A 71-year-old employee of Bauxite Company Jamaica was shot and killed and a female teacher injured following an attack at a bar in Western Park Mapin in Clarendon on Friday night. The deceased has been identified as Harry Hawthorne, a supervisor at Jamalco and a resident of Glenhaven Close in Mapin, the parish capital. A motive for the shooting has not been established. Reports are that about 8 p.m., Arthur and the assistant teacher were sitting inside the bar when a vehicle drove up and explosions were heard. Three alleged masked men subsequently entered the bar and opened gunfire, hitting Arthur and the woman. The police said the men left the premises, but one returned and shot the injured Arthur in the head before escaping in a waiting motor vehicle. The bartender who was assisting the victims reported the escape unheard. The police were summoned and Harthorn and the woman were taken to hospital where Harthorn was pronounced dead. Up to March 31, a total of 18 people were murdered in Clarendon. 15-year-old Portmore mother and 1-year-old son missing. The police are reporting that a 15-year-old girl and her 1-year-old son from Portmore St. Catherine have been missing since Friday morning. The mother's name is Ruthan Wilson and her son is Malika Williston. Both are from Portmore Park in Bridgeport. Wilson is of brown complexion, slim built and about 5 feet 3 inches tall, while Malika is of dark complexion and about 2 feet. The Portmore police say the two were last seen at home at about 5 a.m. on Friday. Wilson was dressed in a peach dress, while Malika was wearing a blue, red and white jumper. The police say all efforts to contact them have proven futile. Anyone know the whereabouts of Wilson and her son, is asked to contact the Portmore Police at 876-989-8422-119 Police Emergency Number or the nearest police station. Man shot injured at Popular Montego Bay Club A man was shot and injured at a popular club in Montego Bay, St. James on Friday. The man, a construction worker from Sandy Bay in Montpelier, Hanover, was shot while working at the club, the police stated. He has since been treated at hospital. Information reaching reporters indicated that the man was at work when he was pounced upon by two other armed men with gun guns. The men opened fire at him. The construction worker reported they ran and fell, and the gunmen fled the area in a waiting silver Toyota Axio motor car. After the shooting subsided, the no injured man was found suffering from gunshot wounds. Other workers assisted him to hospital where he was treated. No motive has been established for the attack, the police stated. Man killed in fiery crash in Montego Bay. A man is dead following a motor vehicle accident at the entrance of the Long Hill in the vicinity of Kinggate in Montego Bay on Saturday evening. It is understood that sometime after 7 p.m., a Nissan Pulsar sedan, driven by the now deceased, slammed into two sections of walls along the roadway before bursting into flames shortly after. The driver is believed to have been the sole occupant of the vehicle and whose identity has not been ascertained remained trapped throughout as the flame burned through the car. Firefighters were called in and a team from the Montego Bay Fire Station was dispatched to the scene where they carried out cooling down operations. During that activity, the remains of the deceased were seen inside the vehicle. The accident has left a major buildup of traffic along both sides of the roadway. Fisherman 18-year-old female charge after magazine found at St. Anne Home Two individuals have been charged with possession of assorted parts of firearm following an incident in Corner Street Discovery Bay in St. Anne on Thursday. Charged are 32-year-old Jasper Clark, a fisherman, of Corner Street and 18-year-old Trishana Grant of Florence Park, both in St. Anne. Reports from the St. Anne's Bay Police are that about 3.45 p.m., a team conducted a targeted raid at the dwelling house that was occupied by Clark and Grant. During a search, one black and chrome Springfield magazine was found hidden under a stone at the front of the house. They were subsequently arrested and charged. Their court date is being finalized. Westmoreland mechanic charged after man shot in the foot. A man has been arrested and charged in connection with a shooting in Linton Penn, Westmoreland last year. Charged with one with intent, possession of prohibited weapon, and using a firearm to commit a felony is 20-year-old Alex Hill, a mechanic of Bolstred Grange Hill in the parish. 
reports from the Green Chill Police are that about 11.30 p.m. on Monday, June 5, 2023, a man was at home when he heard a knocking at his kitchen window. He reported he went to make checks and saw Hill standing in his yard with a firearm in his hand. Hill allegedly opened gunfire at the complainant who ran inside his bedroom. After the shooting subsided, the man discovered that he had received a gunshot wound to his right foot. He was assisted to hospital where he was treated and released. During an investigation, the police said he was identified as a suspect and was arrested in the Geneva district of Grinchill in Westmoreland during a police operation. His court date is being finalized, police stated. Criminal Records Office Now Digital As the Jamaica Constable Force JCF continues its robust transformation process, one of its major service to the public is being overhauled to improve efficiency and customer satisfaction. The Criminal Records Office CRO, which produces police records and other products for a variety of purposes and which began digitizing parts of its process and adding new locations for the pickup of completed records, will be expanding its police certificate application management system to its substance of Summit, St. James, Point Bay, St. Mary, and Mipin Clarendon. The first major change sees the process of setting an appointment moving online after paying the requisite fee at the Tax Administration Jamaica office. Persons must now visit the JCF website to set an appointment, the JCF stated. The online process requires a digital photograph, pictures of the TAJ receipt, and pictures of a valid government estate ID. After completing the online application process, persons will receive an email with instruction on the next steps to take the person which will be required to print the application form in colored and take in, along with the photo that was uploaded to the website on the day of their appointment. The JCF said manual appointments have been discontinued. Persons who made a manual application and were given a date beyond Monday, March 25, 2024, will have to reapply online to schedule their appointment and receive a new date and time. Completed police records must be collected at the various fingerprinting subsites, submit St. James, Pomanto St. Mary, and Maypen Clarendon. This must be done at appropriate times, the JCF stated. Applicants who are fingerprinted in Kingston will collect completed records at the Police Officers Club, Kingston 10, between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. No collections will be done at the downtown office. To support the public during the period of transition, the JCF has set up helplines for assisting persons, which they may call. CRO Headquarters on Duke Street, Kingston at 876-922-0125 or 876-922-3221. Summit St. James at 876-224-1012. Pomona Bay St. Mary at 876-975-5066 or 876-833-5904. Maypen Clarendon at 876-224-1014 or 876-986-1491. Persons may also use the online chat feature for help. The JCF encourages persons to make use of other avenues as we work to improve the services for the benefit of all the four stated. Give him 63 years. Arguing that Gregory Roberts is a habitual criminal, the prosecution on Friday asked the court to consider stopping him with life imprisonment for the murder of schoolgirl Shanika Gray with no possibility of parole until he has served 63 years. My lord, we live in Jamaica and anybody who goes before the court three times in three years must receive no mercy. My lord, we must not allow people of Jamaica to mock the justice system, argued the lead prosecutor from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, Andrea Martin Swaby. She was given her sentence in hearing submission to High Court Justice Bertram Morrison in the St. James Circuit Court. On February 18, 2014, Roberts was convicted with simple larceny and was given a suspended sentence. He later escaped custody in April of 2016. Martin Swaby said Roberts has displayed what she refers to as a habitual level of criminality. He got 12 months suspended from two years, where you are not to do anything between the 18th of February 2014 and the 18th of February 2016. But then, two months later, my lord, it is telling. You are no convict for escaping custody and you have received six months imprisonment at hard labor, stated Martin Swaby. She pointed out that at this time, the maximum sentence was two years in prison for escaping custody, but the court system was kind to robbers and he was sentenced to only six months. 
after the court system extended that olive branch on the 5th of April 2016, nine months later in February 2017, Mr. Roberts does what I am going to categorize as one of the worst examples of a case she said referring to Shanika's gruesome murder. So my lord, when he comes here now in 2024, do we say simple larceny and escaping custody is no moment? Can this court find that Mr. Roberts can truly be rehabilitated? Questioned Martin Swaby. On Thursday, Roberts' lawyer Paris told Justice Morrison that while the prosecution was seeking the death penalty, they should only be applied if the court finds that the convicted individual is, is, is incapable of reform. However, on Friday, Martin Swaby made it clear that she was not seeking the death penalty. She said, what is being sought is life imprisonment, parole, non-eligibility for 50 years, and with other aggravated factors being considered, she arrived at 63 years in her calculation. For the two previous convictions that he obtained in the space of two years before the murder of Shanika Gray, you must add another three years to those aggravated features. So I arrived at 63 and did I abide by the law Martin Swaby told the judge. Roberts was found guilty by a seven-member jury on January 24. Justice Marson is expected to hand down his sentencing on April 12. Shanika, who was a grade 10 student at the time of her death, was found dead three days after she had been reported missing. She was last seen alive in Montego Bay while on her way home from the funeral of a schoolmate. Roberts and his co-accused Maria Marson were later taken into custody in connection with the killing. Marson pleaded guilty in September 2022 after entering a plea deal with the state and was sentenced to life in prison a month later. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.